G'day, I'm Dave Boyle and the purpose of this tutorial is to help you become familiar with the Visual Wrap software. I'd like to show you the various screens and options that are available and I'll do this by working with one of the scripts that's available in the standard pattern library. So when we open up the Visual Wrap software, this is the screen that we, we're faced with. Now Visual Wrap uses scripts to describe patterns and scripts are small pieces of computer language which describe a pattern. They're saved on your hard drive in the form of a text file and uh, Visual Wrap opens up these files to then use them to, to draw lines on the screen representing your patterns. So if we want to open up an existing script, we go to this open menu or we can go to file open script. They both do the same thing. Once we do that, we then find where our scripts are saved. You could have them in various locations. On my machine, I've saved the standard pattern library in my patterns folder. So if I double click on standard pattern library and I can find the one that I'm, I'm after. In my case, I'm interested in number 11, CRTA 11, custom model thread art 11, star two tone. I can double click on that. And then what we see is the script gets loaded into this pattern script window. For now, don't be concerned about understanding what the script actually means and interpreting those lines. For now, we're going to work visually and let, soft, let the software do the, the work. If we hit the wrap button, what happens is Visual Wrap looks at the lines of script, follows those instructions and draws the pattern as quickly as it can. We're showing one single pattern repeat. And if I hit my 3D viewer, we can then see that in glorious three dimensions. That's, this is how it will look on an actual rod takes a moment to load, but once it does, we can see a single pattern repeat, which is the same as what has been generated in the flat view window. We may be interested in seeing more than one pattern repeat, so the plus and minus buttons are how we increase or decrease the pattern repeats. So if I lengthen that to say three and hit wrap suddenly we have three pattern repeats and if I'd like to then see that in three dimensions I'd hit my 3D button fit it to the screen and there's our three pattern repeats oops let's spin it around if we if we want The next thing I'd like to help you become familiar with is working with the colours. So we have a list of spools that are available and these are in the spool toolbar towards the top of the screen. Most scripts use eight, up to eight spools. So these are the numbered boxes one to eight. And in this script, spool number one is black. So if we change spool number one from black to another color, we, we double click on the spool. We then have a look at the different colors that are available. In this case, I've got the NURBS Shade Packs spool library loaded. There are other libraries available as well, and they're free to download from the Thread Central website. But for now, I'm going to choose a wintergreen number one. So if I double click on that, you can see that the black spool, which was number one, has now changed into a wintergreen spool. If I hit wrap, the software then uses that spool in place of uh, the color that was there before and regenerates the pattern. And to, again, see that in the 3D viewer, we hit 3D and we then see the, um, the pattern that's been wrapped.
When we hit wrap, the pattern wraps as quickly as possible, which is great for quickly seeing uh, which, what the, the pattern looks like and also allowing us to work quickly with changing different colours. We may be more interested in seeing how the pattern develops thread by thread and to assist us with that we have a couple of different wrapping modes. At the moment we're in auto, auto wrapping mode which means wrap as fast as possible. If we change it to delay hit the clear button and then hit wrap. We will see that the pattern gets wrapped as it was before, but this time there's a slight pause between each thread. This allows us to see that pattern wrapping thread by thread and we get a good feel for how the pattern develops. That becomes important as we lay threads down on our rod because we want to get a good understanding of where to put the next threads and what the pattern should be looking like at various different stages of completion. At any time we could hit auto to quickly finish wrapping. And for even greater control, if we go to single thread mode by hitting single on the right hand side, clear and then hit wrap. We're told the wrap has started, use the next button to lay threads. So we say OK. So now every time we hit next is when the next threads on the screen get wrapped. Next, 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 and so on. So we can go at a rate which suits us to lay those threads down. And at any time, we could pause, we could hit the 3D viewer, and we could then see how that's going to look on our virtual rod. The next window I'd like to show you is the taper view. We can launch the taper view window by going to window taper or we can use this icon which is the taper view window icon. And what we see now is the same pattern that was in the flat view, but it's slightly tapered. And the amount of taper depends on the measurements that we've placed into the butt diameter window and the tip diameter window. They represent the diameter of the rod at, at the butt end of where the wrap's gonna go and the tip end of where the wrap finishes. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'll make it a little more dramatic and put something quite radical. So this is quite a significant taper. If I hit refresh, we can see that this flat view pattern has been adjusted to suit the, the taper according to the dimensions that we've placed. If we hit the print button, that will then print to our printer true to size. And that means we could cut this out and wrap it around our rod and it should fit exactly. That's quite handy for having a look at how the, the pattern is going to look on our rod very quickly. It gives us a good feel for the proportion of the number of repeats that we've used according to the scale of, of the rod. Also lets us compare colours with the, the other colours that we know are going to be on the, on the rod, maybe the blank colour and the colours of different components that we're using. We can decide quickly if we're happy with the colour combo that we've chosen for our, our pattern. If we have a look up the top of the um, visual wrap screen, we can see a thing called preferences. If I click on the preferences, we get these boxes up here. And there are various options which are more or less set and forget. So typically once these have been set, you probably would not visit them very often. One of the most common ones which needs to be set up is the thread width. So when Visual Wrap draws lines on the screen, it assumes a certain thickness of, of line. And on some monitors, depending on how good your 
display is and, and at what resolution it's being run at, you might find that little gaps appear between the, the lines on the screen. So for example, if I go the flat view thinnest setting for the thread width and say apply, when I say OK, when I clear and wrap, we can see there's lots of gaps between the threads and you can't actually see the pattern. So that thin setting is way too thin for, for my monitor. So if we go back to preferences and um, if we tried number two, clear wrap, that looks better. So on this pattern, two is, is a good setting for, for mine. On different uh, patterns, depending on how the, the script was written, you may find that um, three or even four is a, a more appropriate setting to use. Once you've set that up, then you typically would not need to revisit it. Also on preferences, um, it talks about the thread size to use on the zoom window. So that zoom window, we can launch by going to window zoom. And what that does is it shows a single repeat of, of the pattern. And now anytime we hit wrap, the threads are sent to the zoom window rather than the flat view window. Now we can see some gaps between the threads and on our preferences, we're at the thickest setting possible. So that's as good as we're going to get in terms of gaps between threads on our, on our um, uh, zoom window. It would be great if I had a, a virtual packer to, to push these threads together, but um, that doesn't exist. So um, this is as, as good as we can get. On our taper view, we are able to generate a spacing table. So if I hit spacing, what that does is it generates this spacing list. And to do that, it looks at the number of pattern repeats that we've set, in this case, three. It looks at the dimensions that we've entered for the butt diameter and tip diameter. It's calculated the length of the wrap and it's then come up with the various spacings showing the crossing points of our layout threads. And to interpret that, if we say 2D draw, it then superimposes the numbers on each of the axes showing the distance in this case cumulatively from from the butt end so 14.1 millimeters to the first crossing point 44.8 millimeters to the second and so on if we go back to our script window and we can do that by either hitting this icon saying script window or going window script. We can see that there's a scope button and we can wrap all the threads or only the layouts. So to show you how both of those are working, in our pattern script, we've got two sections. We've got the section called sequence and we've got the section called background. And these names have, are arbitrary. They've come from whoever has written this script and, and placed the, the name of those sections in there. When we hit scope, we can choose which of those sections we want to wrap. So for the initial layout threads, I may be interested in just seeing the layout threads from the sequence part of the pattern, which is the actual formation of this star. So if I uncheck the background and say OK, and then rather than clicking all threads to see the whole pattern, I just see the layouts only. Now when I go clear wrap, we're shown just the layout threads for the sequence part of the pattern. We could revert back to the whole pattern and we could choose all threads and wrap, and that will wrap the, the whole pattern for us. In the spools toolbar along the top of the window, we see this more colors button and we use more colors to 
load different color libraries. So we have the NURBS shade packs loaded. We may choose another color library that we have available in our system. For example, Madeira, Good Broad, ProRap. So hopefully that gives you a good overview of the key features of the Visual App software, how to navigate across the screens, how to make some of the initial settings you might need, and how to generate patterns in 2D and 3D using the inbuilt features.